You woke up early to a humid morning. The night before, you finished packing your luggage, a small handheld suitcase. You readied yourself and turned on the radio. A while later, you hear. The temperature in Saigon is 105 degrees and rising. This will be followed by the plane of I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. You gather your suitcase and a handful of personal belongings and leave the house. A short while later, you arrived at an embassy. Outside stood a few foreign men carrying assault rifles. You showed them your document and they let you through. Your life is about to change. After almost 20 years of involvement in Vietnam, the United States of America agreed to a ceasefire with North Vietnam. For America and many Americans, this became the end of the Vietnam War. However, fighting still continued between North Vietnam and South Vietnam. By the spring of 1975, the People's Army of Vietnam, or North Vietnam, was quickly making progress towards Saigon. The people in Saigon feared that they would face mass arrests, imprisonment in re-education camps, and execution at the hands of the communists. It became clear that they had to evacuate. Many Vietnamese, third world evacuees, and Americans were evacuated via cargo and transport planes. However, it became more risky and challenging as the People's Army of Vietnam approached Saigon. On the 20th of April, the feet just outside of Saigon signaled the end of the South Vietnamese forces. The USS Midway and USS Hancock would arrive just off the coast of South Vietnam after successfully finishing Operation Eagle Pool. Most of the carrier's air wings were replaced with large CH-53 helicopters. The carriers would also be joined by Task Force 76, consisting of four amphibious transport dock ships, one amphibious assault ship, three dock landing ship, four tank landing ship, two cargo ship, one cruiser ship, five destroyer, one destroyer escort, and one frigate. They were also joined by the USS Enterprise and USS Coral Sea, and 14 tugboats and large transport ships. Air America, a regional airline secretly owned and operated by the CIA, chipped in with a further 24 helicopters and 31 pilots. As the People's Army of Vietnam approached, Saigon Airport was struck by rockets and artillery, making evacuation via cargo and transport plane practically impossible. With the fall of Saigon imminent and thousands needing evacuation, something had to be done. In preparation for the evacuation, the USS Embassy created and distributed a 15-page brochure called the Standard Instruction and Advice to Civilian in an Emergency. The brochure would go into detail about the evacuation process and the collection points. On one of the evacuation pages, it stated, Note evacuation signal. Do not disclose to other personnel. When the evacuation is ordered, the code will be read out on Armed Forces Radio. The code is, The temperature in Saigon is 105 degrees and rising. This will be followed by the playing of I'm Dreaming of a White Christmas. On the early morning of April 29, 1975, armed marines were flown into Saigon and onto carriers. Their jobs were to hold the designated landing zones and stand by on recovery ships. Soon after, the evacuation signal was broadcasted, beginning Operation Frequent Win. Helicopters shuttled 50 to 60 people at a time from Saigon to the carriers. From there, the helicopters would unload the passengers, refuel, and immediately head back. This process continued from the 29th to the 30th. Unexpectedly, many Vietnamese military helicopters flew out to the carriers as well, hoping to take refuge. As the carriers filled up, helicopters were pushed into the ocean to make room. In the event that there was no space to land, pilots were ordered to drop their passenger into the carrier before landing their helicopters in the sea and to wait to be rescued. At one point during the operation, a small observation aircraft circled the USS Midway and dropped a note. On the note, the pilot requested for room to be made for him and his family to land. A helicopter was dropped overboard to make room. Outside of the operation, tens of thousands of Vietnamese escaped Saigon via small ships and wooden boat. They were all taken in by Task Force 76 and brought to safety. By the end, 1,375 Americans and 5,595 Vietnamese another third world country citizen were evacuated as part of the operation. In the months of April, 50,000 people were flown out via cargo and transport aircraft. In total, excluding Americans, nearly 140,000 Vietnamese and other third world country citizens 
were evacuated from Saigon and taken to America. Operation Frequent Win marked an end to America's involvement in Vietnam. It was a dark chapter for America and many Americans. Even so, they did their duty the best they could. The Americans and others who partook in the operation did more than was asked for them. Many evacuees from Saigon recounted that they were met with compassion, understanding, kindness, time and affection, all which helped ease the pain of leaving their home and gave them optimism for a future in America. If you want to find out more about Operation Frequent Win, I recommend reading The Sympathizer. The first part of the book is written from the perspective of, without spoiling, a person evacuating from Saigon as part of the operation. The author has a really unique writing style and the book has won many awards, most notably the 2016 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. See you next time.